What's up, everybody? My name is Abbas El Marani, and welcome to Health Econ Weekly. I just wanted to start off by making a quick shout out to all of you that have been watching the videos and providing feedback. It's been extremely positive, and I just want to say thank you. We've got a lot to cover today, so what we're going to do is actually chop it into a two part series. The first is going to cover decision trees, and the second is going to cover Markov modeling. Okay, so you've been super proactive. You've seen the literature review video. You've seen how to conduct an economic evaluation and healthcare video. And now you're ready to maybe slightly, probably kind of maybe interested in actually doing one. Now the doing part is known as decision analytical modeling. It's a fancy way of saying that you have a systematic and rigorous approach to decision making under certain conditions of uncertainty. That wasn't really that simple either. There are a number of ways in which you can conduct decision analytical modeling. You're specifically here for decision trees. Now, before we ask some important questions, we need to set the scene. The reality is that not one single trial will contain all the information or evidence needed to conduct an economic evaluation. Trials often have strong restrictions about who can participate and therefore might not reflect a typical patient. Thirdly, trials tend to have short follow-up time and therefore might not have the opportunity to capture long-term impacts on quality of life and survival. Lastly, trials might not use appropriate comparators. Please remember, this is only about RCTs, randomized controlled trials. There are other types of resources that exist. I'll put a link in the bio about how to evaluate some of the quality of these resources. Okay, now that we have that covered, let's ask some important questions. When the heck is it appropriate to use decision trees? Luckily, there are existing and simple guidelines to help answer that question. Decision trees are most appropriate when health events happen close together, do not repeat, and when the effect of the treatment is over quickly. An easy example of when decision trees are not appropriate are for chronic conditions. That's because health events, risks, and effectiveness of treatment vary over time. Now the first step for building decision trees, and in fact any type of decision analytical modeling, is to formulate the decision problem. The decision problem often involves two options and one outcome in which to base a recommendation on. As always, it's a lot easier to follow with an example. So let's just say you have two suppliers of prostheses for hip replacements, and you want to know which one has the higher chance of returning a patient to normal hip functioning. Decision trees are read from left to right. Starting on the left, we have a decision node. Using our example, we have the following, supplier A and supplier B. I should also point out that you're able to compare three options. You'll just end up with three decision nodes. We can now add our chance nodes. Chance nodes define a risk. They tell you what happens after you undertake a decision. From our example, we're told that each prosthesis is actually associated with slightly different perioperative mortality. Hence, we have the following. It's important to note that probabilities stemming from chance nodes must add up to one. Now, if there's any other risk that you want to account for, you can add this as a chance node. In our example, we're interested in the likelihood or the probability of a patient returning to normal hip functioning. So we can go ahead and add that here. Once you're happy with it, you can add terminal nodes. Terminal nodes indicate that the outcome that we're looking for has been observed. For now, we're going to keep it simple and just have single payoffs. The payoff associated with 
returning to normal hip functioning is one, and the payoff for not achieving the outcome that we want or perioperative mortality is placed at zero. Okay, so now that we have our decision tree, we have our transition probabilities, and we have our payoffs, we now calculate the expected value at each terminal node, weighted by the unconditional probability of reaching that node. In our example, we can follow through from our decision node through to each terminal node. One strong assumption that economic models tend to make is that decision makers are risk neutral, that they are indifferent between expected outcomes that have the same values but have a riskier component, such as perioperative mortality. In our example, it's clear that one supplier has higher perioperative mortality than the other. Defining our decision problem in terms of likelihood of returning to normal hip functioning has led us to ignore the differences between being alive and not getting the desired outcome and being dead. This not only highlights the importance of how you define your decision problem, but also how you interpret results. From our previous video about economic evaluations and the different types, we know that decision makers often consider a number of factors when deciding on resource allocation. The example that we've considered so far has only looked at single value outcomes. However, from our previous video, we know that to undertake an economic evaluation, we need to consider both the costs and the outcomes. As always, and in line with all economic evaluations, we need to make sure that we have the appropriate comparator, and we must be aware and clear about the perspective that we're taking in order to decide which costs and which outcomes to include. We can now add our costs and our benefits to our analysis. As per our video on the different types of economic analysis, how we define our outcome will dictate what type of economic evaluation or type of economic analysis takes place. For example, defining our outcomes in natural units will yield a cost effectiveness analysis. Alternatively, defining our outcomes in quality adjusted life years will result in a cost utility analysis. That's decision trees in a nutshell. Now, if you've liked this video, please comment, place downward kinetic energy on that like button, and don't forget to subscribe.